Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Today we have Byron, who has been a long... Uh, everybody just keeps asking us to bring him on, so we're finally... We're really excited to get you on here, and you can tell your story, so thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Seriously. Of course, of course, of course, man. Of course, it's it's our pleasure too. So lately, you've been killing it. Um, that, you guys don't know we have like a main chat where people post their trades, their charts, and all that. And Byron posts his trades like daily, and he is killing it. And he's very insightful into uh, like market moves and stuff like that. And I'm, I always look forward to his post. So you know, if you want to give us a little insight, you know, how did you even get into trading? How did you get? How did this whole thing start? Uh, yeah. And kind of take us from there. Absolutely. So uh, uh, thanks again for having me on. Um, it's been a pleasure to be part of the MIC family and just learn from you guys and all that. Um, but my journey, uh, so my journey trading wise started uh, about late 2018 or, or probably mid 2018, I would say. Uh, and with me, for those who, who didn't see when I was brought on as a junior moderator, like I'm starting a lot later in the game than a lot of you guys. Like I've got a wife, got four kids. And um, back at that time, so mid-2018, like we were just starting to explore what are different options, ways we can bring more income into the family. And um, so, you know, I looked at eventually crossed some day trading videos on YouTube. And uh, of course, I connected with Tim Sykes. He's the yeah. gateway yeah. Yeah, no, the gateway truck. He's the gateway truck. <laughs> and, uh, and, and actually, like, it was crazy because I, I bought his um, DVD where he goes through, like, the different patterns of a basic run-up, right? And yep. so that's some basic foundation stuff from him. And I originally opened, like, a $1,000 account. And I know that he I knew that he had said something about holding overnight and waiting for a gap up in the morning. I had no idea what I was doing. But... Uh, like on like that first weekend, I just randomly held a stock overnight and was just sitting there in the pre-market, like not knowing what am I supposed to do. And, and <laughs> the stock just started spiking um, probably around like 7 a.m. Uh, when volume Jesus. started coming in. And I sold it quick for like 800 buck profit. And oh, right shit. There, I mean, that, that, was the, that was the fish hook right there. It was like thousand yep. yeah, dollars almost doubled it. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is, this is it. And this is going to be easy. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I started trading and you know had mixed results initially, uh, but actually I'm one of those guys who did things the wrong way um, coming in initially. Like because I had some mixed results and was yeah. overconfident, I was like, if I can just load up this account a little bit more, uh, I'll have bigger numbers and be able to push myself forward. And so I actually uh, loaded up some credit cards. Um, oh, shit. got some debt debt on me and and really uh blew up that account uh, in epic fashion i don't know if you all remember wow. i don't know if you all remember the bpth yeah, yeah bro, got the most like, one of the best short squeeze in history yeah exactly yep that was the day where i was completely humble <laughs> um for those wow, who don't know yeah. if you, if you can look back at a chart back on like march of 2019 um, it went from like six to what six to sixty and like yeah yeah it went to seven like yeah, and, like, yeah, 70, yeah. yeah. And like two days it 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 had recent it had failed I forget what the level was but it had failed somewhere around like 15 20 bucks or whatever like three yep. days prior so I was shorting into that and just holding and um Jesus. gapped up the next day and ran to 70 so blew up that account and I actually took a year off uh of trading of just like you know handling that debt just completely stepping away but still like i had so fallen in love with it by that point that i was still like for a year without without trading was still studying charts like every day yeah. um, trying to to learn what i could and um didn't yeah. get, didn't jump back in until now were um, you emotionally like were you okay like because i know a lot of people like you know you, you blow an account or especially mm -hmm. when you like take out money to fund like were you like emotionally like kind of like fucked for a while or were you yeah like, i mean like it, it was tough day? because i mean i had to i had to completely come like my my tail between my legs like i tell yeah. my wife like i hadn't i hadn't told her this is also uh husbanding poor husbanding 101 um, 
Take she, notes, everybody. He didn't know the extent of which uh, I had I had loaded up this account. Yeah. So when that happened, I was like, all right, I gotta like lay everything out there and, and just let her know, like, you know, I, I completely screwed this up. Um, so, so what was her response? That, silence at first. I think yeah. that's that's generally how my wife like broods. She will yeah. she'll sort of take it all in. Um, but yeah, she was, she was not the blow up type, but it was just like, I mean, there was that trust that was eroded there, you know, for a while. And, um, and it was it's just tough, like, man. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough when you have a, a passion for, for like markets and, and you have yeah. a passion for stuff like that, like a, anything that's kind of risk, risky. And, yeah. you know, it's like, I think we all have girlfriends or wives or most people in that might see. And it's, you know, trying to explain to them how it works sometimes. And, and, you know, especially okay. the blow ups, they'd probably think you're nuts, but. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard. It's hard. Now, how did you explain that to her? How did you, if you don't mind, you know, how did you kind of get yeah. over that, that fear of talking about it even? Um, well, it was just like, it was, it was obvious. It was immediately obvious because it was like in a single day, uh, my account was probably, um, I was using, I was using the offshore, I was using sure trader at the time mm -hmm. and <laughs> wasn't, yeah, exactly. It wasn't quite at like PDT. Yeah. I was hovering around PDT okay. and, yep. and was sort of counting on that money to be able to generate profit, to pay off the debt. Well, once I, once I blew up the account, I mean, it was just like immediately obvious, like there's no way I'm going to be able to just, I mean, this yeah. debt paid off and I need to yeah. be honest with like where all of our, actual funds from working and stuff were, were coming, we're going to go into that. And, and so it was just like immediately obvious, okay, got to come completely yeah. clean, got to let her know exactly the extent of what's happened and just deal with it as it came. And, and, yeah. and she's wow. amazing. And um, so we got through Kudos that. Kudos to her, man. Huh? Kudos to her and props to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. She's, you know, she's, she's amazing. Um, it's amazing. So, so, at this point, so at this point, you take a year off. Mm -hmm. You kind of work through the debts, get everything going. Now, how, what kind of brought you back? Again, like I had never, I've never lost the passion for trading. Like uh, it's for those, for any, all of us know just like uh -huh. once you catch that bug and I mean, just what can, what it can afford you. And if yeah. you're those that also just love the challenge of trading, like I love the challenge Absolutely. of trying to execute better yeah. and better, sticking to our plan, sticking to a process and, um, challenging myself. Um, so never lost that bug and, you know, just spent all that time studying patterns and sort of back testing strategies and, um, just believe that I had some, some solid, uh, trading plans in place. Yeah. Um, and then it was just a matter of, I had just raised some, uh, money on the side that wasn't part of like our budgeted money, um, to, Jump back in to the markets. Uh, I think it was roughly a couple thousand, um, and this was late 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so from March 2019 to like late summer 2020 is how long I was I was off, and then uh, was able to find some some pretty good success success uh, late 2020, and then. 2021 just kept building from there. It was my like first year of like real like serious profitability and just growing and scaling my account. Um, and then that just brought a whole new set of challenges, which was yeah. uh, I grew so rapidly in 2021 that oversizing was a problem. Um, like yep. impulse control, like recognizing that. And that's still the biggest thing I think I struggle with. Uh, yeah. People control. think you become profitable and then they think it's easy. They think it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, because like, even, because, like, right, right. Because even when, when I've recognized a, a good setup, what I'm often tempted to do is to like, just, I don't, I have to make sure that my scaling strategy is, is tight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because if I get in too much too early, then I'm uncomfortable and I can't really let the stock fully do what it wants to do before it starts to move in my direction. Um, so that was like one of the challenges I started to, to need to deal with. Um, yeah, but. for sure. How did that go with kind of like uh, education wise? Like, um, were you an MIC at like any point then? Like kind of like when did you join? Were you <laughs> any, anywhere else? Like, I mean, you can talk about like really anything on here. Um, yeah. Um, so I did a lot of YouTubing and was sort of spinning my wheels there. Um, Really, the biggest thing was just 
stuck like tracking my own like setups that I thought that I observe and just yeah. again, 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 day after day, just studying charts. Like yeah. I've logged so many hours of studying charts and becoming familiar with patterns. Um, and I, I came across, uh, I think I came across like Alex and Bao a, a while ago. Like I saw his video when he went up to SMB. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it was just de detailing some of his early uh, journey there. Yeah. But I, I joined MIC last fall, I think. Um, and some of the biggest lessons that are, have really shaped my trading today have come since then. Yeah. Uh, you know, sizing properly, fantasy orders is the biggest thing that's helped me. Um, waiting for certain lines, and that, that's really helped me. Yeah. Um, so I think what MIC has helped me in is alleviating some of those super high bounces in my PL and also, yeah. you know, like I'm much more uh, gradual incline and, and have the patience to wait for, you know, we say scalping, yeah. what is it, scale yeah. the best, scalp the rest. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yep. Um, size of the size best. Of the best. Size of the best. Size of the best. Yeah. So size yeah, of the setups and. Um, I think that's awesome. I I feel like a lot of people like like I like to talk about MIC especially because a lot of profitable traders will hit me up on like Instagram or Twitter and be like, yo, like you know, like I do make money, but like I'm, I I want to learn more. Like, can MIC help me? And I always kind of like lately I've been using the referral of like because I'm a golfer, so I'll use like oh like I'm a decent golfer, you know, and I go out there and I play well, but sometimes like going to get those lessons and like talking to like the, the pros that work at, you know, shops and all that stuff, they can make you 10 times the better trader you yeah. are. And it could be your right. golfer you are. And it's just such a little tip and stuff like that. And, you know, I like that you were talking about how size, like this is the problem I deal with. I think most of my DMS is, as a short bias guy is that most people are size too big. They're not letting the stock kind of work, do like have wiggle room and work. And, you know, I think, I think seeing someone like you who is successful and, and does make some good money do that I think people need to take that into consideration in their own trading and i think it'll make a massive difference yeah for sure yeah for sure it's a struggle, like, those man. are all fundamental there's such a they make such a big difference between even just not being consistently profitable at all to being able to like really start to consistently grow your account like those small those small details um, yeah those small bits yeah what would you so what would you say that you're kind of like working on now? Like what, what would you say like kind of like as far as like struggle wise, like what would you say you're kind of working on now? Um, well, that's, that's definitely uh, one. So the whole like really truly trusting my fantasy orders. Yeah. Um, just jumping into stocks because I can or because I have like the cushion um, yeah. to yeah. Uh, weather the drawdown. Um, I think cutting those law, cutting like cutting stocks when they go against me and like jumping back in, like being comfortable jumping back in, yeah. um, that's something that I'm trying to consistently do now, like rather, rather than just, uh, allowing a bit of the drawdown, I'm much, I'm becoming more comfortable. Just go ahead and just cutting it as soon as it like hits my break even yeah. or slightly beyond my break even. And if it immediately stuffs, just like jumping back in. Yeah. Um, that's been like really helpful for just, I guess, my psychology of just like being comfortable in a trade and yeah. being right. If you know, you got to take paper cuts along the way. Um, yeah. yeah. But, but, I, but you control What I like is that you control it. You know, I see your charts too. Like you control your loss. You're not like, you're not just like scaling to infinity. You're not just like shorting for no reason or longer for mm -hmm. no reason. You have a yeah. plan. And, you know, you take those cuts, but like, if you take a planned cut, you can make that money back. No problem. Yeah, it's yeah. when you take an unplanned cut, like an unplanned bigger loss. It's always bigger. Whenever, whenever it's unplanned, it's always a bigger loss than you expect. And yeah. then you're, then you're trigger shy and you, you won't, you won't be able to do it when the time comes. So, I yeah, mean, it, and you, and how, how long have you been at this again? How many years would, would this year be? If you could um, so like. If you like subtract the year off, this is probably what my my fourth year of trading. Yep. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Three yeah. Or four year Never. Trading. yeah. Bro, everybody Maybe, wants uh, to make it in like one year, bro. Everybody wants yeah. to talk about they were like, oh, one year, one year, but like you're on your four yeah. and with a year off of studying too. So really almost five. Yeah. And right. that's what it takes sometimes is that much screen time to be able to recognize those things. Yeah. And you know, 
that's it, man. I think that's a huge part of your success too. Yeah. And, and, and if there's anything like I could reiterate to people is like, don't try to rush the process because I've, uh, as I was mentioning, like in 2021, when I started to like uh, scale and like really grow up account and build consistency, that also came with that also came those big <laughs> Like yeah. when you're talking about just add, add, adding, just because you have like the account size to do so. Like I was telling um, my my tabs, I'm in a tab with uh, Stefan and Vic. That oh, nice. my, my worst loss of last year was a six figure loss. Um, like, and just ridic- like ridiculously beyond what anything I had lost before. It was yep. on that day when, um, was it Neuro? Neuro was one of the super supernovas yep. I lost on, or it was in N E G G, whatever one of those low float ones that just like yeah, new ads <laughs> ran, ran like crazy. Yep. Cut, yeah, and you feel like it's going to stall out a little bit beyond like your your stop loss, and you say, well, yep. maybe just let it go a little bit, let it go a little bit, and then it runs like forty dollars, yeah. and by that time you're so emotionally invested, like you just like can't. You, you, you go to a point where you literally just like feel like you can't cut it. Like you're not emotionally strong enough yeah. because you let it balloon to this thing that you're way uncomfortable with. Um, so now are you, are you tapped with Vic, uh, the moderator or Vic, the junior mod? Junior mod. Junior mod. Okay. So I, I like that because you guys all have a similar story. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's what I was asking. You guys have all gone through kind of like the blow up phase. Yeah. Um, you've had your initial struggles and like, it's kind of cool that you guys are helping each other now. And all three of you guys are trading really well. You know, you guys are all posting charts all the time. Stefan's a beast. He's been a beast for a while. Vic obviously posts yeah. like huge P and L's and you too. So yeah. I think that's cool. Like kudos to you guys for, you know, sticking with it one and two now kind of being each other's support system. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, would you say that like, like definitely having a tabs like helps you a lot more like a lot of guys like they want to like just go it alone I don't understand why like I think mm-hmm. for me like I also have kind of like a long biased like kind of group that I talk to uh often as well with like a lot of guys who are like kind of growing and like learning and um mm-hmm. you know I think that as far as like it goes for me it's also kind of helped me a lot as well because for a while like I would talk to like James and Tom all the time in the morning and stuff like that. But like, as far as like actual training goes, like James and Tom and I don't really have the same struggles, you know, like James is shorting and training different setups and we can talk about it. Like they'll say, Oh, Harry, you did a good job or Oh, Harry, like good stop or like good, good this, or they'll give me tips too. But like, we're not really trading the same setups, So it gets a lot kind of like harder. Cause like, yeah. like james can't relate to getting like stopped out at the at the low of the day <laughs> just like i can't relate to getting stopped out at the high of the high of the day or something like that right yeah, yeah, so i think yeah. that that's helped me as well just kind of like you know talk it out kind of get on some calls with uh like joe angelo's in there he's a junior mod mm-hmm. um, yeah. you know, there's a there's a couple other guys in there and you know they're they're growing they're kind of on the come up but like it's it's nice to kind of like talk to people who are like seeing the same things as me um, I think that that's yeah. helped me a lot as well. So like, did, did you start to kind of like progress even further once you got the tab group or like, how did that kind of work? I, I would say that like, uh, even just like beyond just the tab group, just being like actively monitoring the main chat in general yeah. um, has, has helped a lot. Just like seeing not only like Vic and Stefan's like you start to get a feel for how people trade when you see their charts and you're able to chat with them. But then obviously like Bao posting all day long. Um, and when you guys post and when I'm trying to learn some short strategy, trying to learn some long strategy, just like the fact that there's this community here where you're constantly sharpening one another, yeah. just even just by participating. If you're an active participant and you're, trying to keep up with what everyone is posting and not only like alerting when new stocks, you know, uh, come on board, um, but just you see how people are actually trading. Just being in MIC since I joined has has caused that process to happen for me. Yeah, I think, I think it's a lot of like dropping your ego too, right? Because it's like, I feel like most traders have such an ego and like they don't, they don't want to hear someone else talking to them or trying to teach them or, and it's like a weird thing, but you know, you seem like a really like, just like 
normal, humble dude. So that probably helps you because it's helped like me. It's helped Harry just being in chat, being with yeah. people, talking to people. Yeah. And it's like huge, you know? So, and I have a question for you because something I noticed about you is you, um, you have really good like analysis. Like whenever you write about something, you're like, oh, I, I feel like this might be a, a top or, or you always just, you have good insight into a lot of stocks moving. Um, so I was curious if that just came from charting over time. Do you have any other kind of uh, people that have helped you out or, you know, how did you kind of come to have that, that I don't want to say intuition, but, but you really do have a lot of good calls and stuff. So I was curious. Yeah, I, I would definitely say the main thing is just charting, like seeing not only chart patterns, but like volume patterns. Like it's not just the candlesticks, but like how does volume change? Um, yeah. yeah when a stock is breaking through a high of a day, is the volume ramping up or is it basically like dead to where you yep. know there's no interest here. Yeah. Um, so it's a safer safer bet to try to short this top or something like that. Um, so yeah, so just mainly just, and I, would, and I would definitely say that volume has been the, the most helpful indicator for me. Like yeah. really yep. to learn and study and have a feel for what's happening beneath your chart. Um, yeah throughout the day as, as, as the stock is moving. Um, that's, a really good tip. that's been the biggest thing for me, I, I would say. Yeah. yeah Do you cool. find like, as far as like volume goes, like you, it's a lot of like, kind of like, like, like almost like inverse analysis. Whereas like if the stock is like, has no volume and like doesn't break down through a level or like has mm -hmm. no volume and we're just kind of consolidating and then we get like a burst of, vo of volume, you're kind mm -hmm. of like looking for something like that, you know, rather than like, we're doing like like would you say like it's more so inverse like you'd say that like if we're if we're not doing a lot of volume we should be going lower so like that's obviously something that you'd want to be paying attention to it's the same thing like if we kind of like break through like let's say high of day and then volume drops off like that's something abnormal you know we should be getting more volume and we should be moving higher do you kind of pay attention to stuff like yeah. that or kind of like how do you use it yeah yeah like i would say like uh, uh, for example, if I'm trying to long and I see like there's, there's high volume in the morning, stock pushes up, starts to consolidate, volume starts to taper off. Yeah. The, one of the first things I'm looking for is when does that, does it, a, another burst in volume sometime late morning, early afternoon, come back into the stock to, yeah. and if it does, and that shows me that, okay, there's still interest in this stock. There's still people monitoring the stock. They're looking to push it higher. And yeah. uh, depending on how it pulls back, then I'm looking to see, does it pull back and still hold above lows? Like, does it make higher lows? And does it do so with the volume decreasing back down? Yeah. So showing me that there's really not a lot of selling pressure here. There's not a lot of shorts that are beating this stock back down. So it still has a chance to potentially ramp back up uh, later in the day, or later in the afternoon or something like that. And so I'll start to look to set some fantasy orders at some of those lower pivots, um, yeah. risking the low of the day, you know, stuff like that. Um, that's cool. That's like, yeah, that's just an example. I'm looking to see how is the volume changing yeah. uh, throughout the day. Yeah, I do, I do something definitely, definitely similar to that. Like where I'm just like, it's hard with volume because like there's so many different details. Like even when I was trying to explain it, I was like, how do I make this like the most simple way possible? But like there is a, there's a lot of different volume. There's hundreds actually, or probably even thousands of like different volume, like analysis examples where, yeah. um, you know, we could sit here all day and just go over, oh yeah, that's a good one. Or, oh yeah, that's a good one. You know, yeah. I think that's where the screen time comes in. Like, I think a lot of people get confused as far as like reading the tape goes. A lot of it is just like being able to interpret volume, you know, where mm -hmm. everyone's yeah. like looking for this like secret signal, but really reading the tape is just being able to interpret volume and just coming up with your own analysis where it's like, I can't explain to James or I can't explain to Byron, you know, certain types of like analysis because you see it and you're like, it's that right there. But it's very mm -hmm. difficult for people who haven't spent screen time or haven't yeah, like spent yeah. a lot of time, you know, right. doing it where I'm like, yeah, did you, did you kind of like see that odd burst right there? Or did you see how that moved that way yeah. there or whatever? You know, yeah. it's really just being able to interpret volume well and using that to make money, you know? And that's why it's so hard so to explain to people who don't have like screen time or they're newer because yeah. they're like, I had a guy ask me a question this morning. Like, he's like, how come you said it wasn't a good long overview app? And I was like, well, we we're doing a lot of buying. We should have moved higher earlier on. And it just, 
was mm-hmm. struggling and struggling and struggling to move higher. But it's like, how do you interpret that in like five words? You know, it's very, very difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. That's why I say it's not just the candles. Like there's within the candles, there's like a story happening within yeah, each candle. Exactly. Two candles that are exactly the same. Um, like the, the, a different story took place in that in that window. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Like I have one. I have. A, I have one last question for you, Byron. Um, mm-hmm. Jesus, BTTX just off the Um, I have one more question for you, actually. So, as someone who obviously has done a lot of charting and a lot of studying and like back testing and all that, and you said you have kids too, you have a family. Um, how did you? How do you kind of break it up? How did you study these charts? How did you dive deeper into them? Uh, and like do that with kids and all that stuff? Because I know a lot of members say that they're like, oh, you know, I. I don't have time to do this, that, but it's so obvious that that's what's necessary to be successful yeah. in this is, is screen time and like getting more and more screen time. So yeah. how did you do it? Like for you, how did you, how did you make it possible? And you know, how did you break apart your studying? I would say. Um, well, first I would just say like, if you want it bad enough, if there's something that you love enough that you're interested enough, like you'll find time to do it. And uh, so for me, like I work full time, uh, from home, thankfully, so I'm able to be in front of the screens and stuff, but um, as a software engineer. So, oh, cool. like, with me, what that often means is that I can use, uh, I'll wake up probably most weekdays, I'll wake up like four or five in the morning um, just to be able to try to get some work done uh, for work in order to, like, have more of my time in the afternoon to be able to sit and trade. And I mean, in the morning and during the early afternoon to sit and trade and stuff. Um, so just sacrificing some sleep, uh, sacrificing <laughs> some other leisure time when my kids aren't, like, awake and stuff, basically, is is the time when I can do it. I mean, after hours, um, you know, that's when I got to put my full-time dad hat on and got to be with the kids and dinner and schoolwork and you know all that stuff so yeah um, yep and if you want it bad enough right you're gonna make it yeah, happen exactly if you want it bad enough and just constant exposure too i would say just even if you only have like maybe an hour or two or three a day to allocate towards it just like constantly being in front of the market constantly trying to just familiarize yourself with how these stocks move the different variables you need to account for, how, like, why if you were expecting a certain uh, stock to react a certain way and it doesn't, like, starting to really try to understand um, all the contributing factors of, like, why why did the stock not behave the way I thought? Okay, let me take a note of that. Let me file that away um, and all that stuff. So I love um, it. finding the time, if you want to do it, you'll find the time to do it. So Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's really important where, like, for me, like when I was starting to get like, I'd say like, quote unquote, good, like I wasn't like I am now, but like I was starting to find some success when I was kind of in university. And for me, time management was like a really big thing, being able to like manage my time and say to myself, like, OK, uh, you know, this time is for, you know, studying charts and I'm going to stick to that. And I also think that like, would you say that your process went from like a, a I'd, I'd say like a P&L based oriented process to like a process process where you're like, you start to go from like caring about making money and, you know, big P&L and like maxing out like the credit cards to have that massive P&L. Would you say you kind of went from there to like more of a chart based process after that kind of year of studying charts? Yeah. I mean, it definitely, I mean, I've just, I've just, I've had I've had that mindset so long of just wanting to, you know, grow as quickly as you can. So you're trying to like jam up your PL, trying to jam yeah. up your ear size. And I've been scarred so many times from that. Like I'm I, I definitely I guess the type that needs to put their hand on the stove. And I've burned my hand on the stove so many times yeah. that you do just eventually get sick of trying to chase profit and just yeah. It, it, it's just a it's like a relief if you can just consistently even if everything isn't like huge numbers just consistently grow in the right direction yeah and so because my goal has sort of shifted to that where i just want to be consistently trending towards my ultimate goals yeah um, like where i want you know what i want for my family what i want to be able to do personally do with my wife like mm-hmm. just uh, as long as i'm growing towards those goals and then, then the speed at which i get there doesn't really matter and so yeah. That's what's that. 
that shift in focus is what's helped me to say, okay, then I really need to hone in on what are those little things that I keep doing that yeah. are the reasons why I take three steps up, two steps back, three steps up, four steps back, five steps yeah. up, one step, like I can just take one step or two steps forward and then even just plateau and then eventually move forward. Yeah. Like that's process. Yeah. That's where process really comes in. Like just minimizing the things that you're doing that are killing yourself. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's like where that. like, that's where like uh, keeping a, keeping a journal is like really important. You know, like a lot of people, like, for example, like I know some long traders that message me and it's like the same mistakes every single day. The most common mistake I see from like longing is like people trying to long broken charts with no volume where it's just like fading and they try and catch the bottom year, try and catch the bottom year, try and catch the bottom year. Mm -hmm. And if those traders had kept like a report card every single time they traded, it's like if you, you know, like just like you, you know, like you find those little mistakes by keeping a journal, keeping a report card, you know, talking to other people because you're like, man, I made this mistake again today. You know, I need to work on this. At least you're verbalizing it and explaining with the tab. And finally, it slowly grows and you can kind of make those building blocks to like grow and grow and grow. Mm -hmm. And a lot of traders, they come into the market, especially newer ones. And, uh, you know, they take a loss and then they just shut down and leave. But it's mm -hmm. like, if you go one step further where you take a loss, you, you explain the setup, you explain your idea and you kind of write a little bit about it. And then you kind of say like, okay, this is what happened today. This is what I need to work on. And then you shut down and then you do whatever, just that little bit of extra work probably can like save you a year of just doing the same shit over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Because what you're really doing is like you're you're multiplying the amount of times that you're seeing certain patterns like you yeah. saw you saw the chart while you were trading it and then going back over, you're seeing it again. So it's like you're you're doubling the amount of hours that in terms of just trying to log hours and trying to log experience, whatever. The more that you go back, you're really like multiplying your experience yeah. um, and just like paying more attention to those little things that you like i said like those little things that you're doing um that they make all the difference in the world and yet we we they're the mistakes that we'll make repeatedly yeah. until we're finally just like stubborn enough to say okay i, I have to change this yeah so save yep. yourself i like that yeah. james you want to say anything i know i like was kind no of no that's there. i i no. you guys are coming i think that's probably a good place to kind of wrap it i mean he had ended on a good note there yeah, um, no, that's great. Yeah, no, I think that was solid. Dude. I was just listening. <laughs> Honestly, I found myself just listening to you guys talk. And, yeah. Um, hell yeah, man. I like so it. Perfect. I cut it there and, yeah. So uh, thanks, Bri Byron, for coming on. on Bi Brian again. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Uh, especially thanks, James. I, I know we were going to do this in the evening, but uh, oh, no, okay. afternoon freed up because your back went out or something like that. So, bro, I like woke up with like a, either a slip disc or some shit. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I'm in some pain today so it worked out good for uh, it worked out good for all of us it worked out good for us so. all right perfect perfect yeah